about seven o'clock here and all three board of selectmen members are on. So if you guys want to uh, open the meeting and get started, we could do that. Look who's there. Whoops. I'll entertain a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Mark Cullen, I moved to the meeting on April 7th, today, Board of Selection at 7 o'clock. Okay, is there a second, Josh? Seconded. Josh Hanson seconded. All those <laughs> say aye. Aye. Mark Cullen, aye. aye. Josh Hanson, aye. Okay. On the new business, I approved the Board of Selectmen's meeting minutes for December 9th, 2019. The Board of Selectmen's meeting for January 9th, 2020. Board of Selectmen meeting from January 30th, 2020. And the Board of Selectmen's meeting minutes from March 9th, 2020. Motion? Motion's been made. Uh, Is there a second? Uh, well, seconded, but um, on our, our agenda, we have them as separate, separate line items. Uh, Separate motions, um, so maybe we should follow protocol and do that. Richie, what do you think? Well, we, we just I, I read them all into the record, so we approved all of them. Some of them yeah. I can't vote on, Rich. I'm sorry. There's some of them. Uh, this is Mark speaking. There's some of them I can't vote on because I wasn't a member of the board at the time. Well, you vote on the ones uh, I, you know, I. Uh, why don't I read them? Uh, very quickly, individually. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the meeting minutes from December 19th, 2019. Second the motion. All those in favor say aye. Josh aye. Andrew, aye. Yeah, okay. Uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the meeting minutes from January 9th, 2020. I'll second the motion. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve minute, um, minute, uh, me meeting minutes from January 30th, 2020. Seconded. Motion to second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Mark Cullen. Josh Hanfer, aye. Ricky Labad, aye. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve meeting minutes from March 19th, 2020. Seconded. Motion second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. Josh aye, Richard. Aye. Aye. Bye, Colin and I. We need. Uh, go ahead, Josh. I want you to read the next point, B. All right. Uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen execute gift agreement pursuant to general law, chapter. 44, paragraph 53A, and accept a gift of $50,000 from the Nahant Preservation Trust to assist the town with evaluating development of the property located at East Point. Is there a second? Second. Mark Allen. Okay. Discussion? Um, uh, so, so people know that uh, this is a... Uh, a gift agreement that's putting being put in place so that if people choose to uh, gift money to the town um, towards uh, issues related to East Point, uh, this is the this is an avenue for those gifts to be made. Okay. The initial gift is fifty thousand dollars, and. Uh, um, but that hopefully will be added to. Further discussion? Uh, just one, um, Tony, is this a document that we can make public? Yes, I can answer yes. that. Yes. Okay, I would like, like to put it online so people could see it, please. <clears throat> okay. Just so people know there's a, you know, it will have our signatures, we each have a copy to sign and, uh, We'll get those signed and um, up to town hall and scanned and posted. Mm -hmm. 
We need a vote. Yeah, we all. Uh, uh, motion's been uh, made and second. All those in favor say aye. Josh Hanfer, aye. Bob Cullen, and I. Ricky Lombard, aye. Unanimous vote. Um, okay, I got one here, Rich. Um, <coughs> um, Pursuant, uh, let's see, alternative agenda, alternative agenda notice. I move that the Board of Selectmen pursuant to 940 CMR 29.03, I move that the Board of Selectmen adopt www.nahat.org as the official method of posting notices for meetings of public bodies in the town of Nahat. Is there a second? Motion to second. second. Discussion? Would you like me to talk a little bit on this? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, the official method of posting meeting notice for the town of the hot up until this point has been posting, you have to post it in two places. So we post one inside the town hall and one outside the town hall. Um, given that we, you know, the building is closed, uh, we've been posting meetings on the community calendar. Uh, so it's more of a formality and um, that the online version of the posting would count as one of those two places under the open meeting law. Uh, so you guys accepting the, the Board of Selectmen voting for this and accepting this in allows us to count that online posting plus the outside posting as our two required spots uh, pursuant to the open meeting law. Is that is that anything to add, Dan? No, no, that, that's fine. We have to pick one. We can only have one official uh, method, right? Um, it's either A, A or B in that regulation you just mentioned. And, and the website, of course, as Tony mentioned, is one. But we can always post elsewhere as well. We can never post enough, to be honest with you, in terms of actually nailing something to a, 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 you know, a, a board or, or whatever. So, yeah, Tony's right on. I think we'll continue to post the hard copies inside and outside the building. Uh, but we're... <laughs> We're also going to be posting online going forward. I think it's something that people wanted to see anyways. So it's, you know, we're, we're kind of being forced into it with the coronavirus situation and the building being closed, but it's a good thing uh, moving forward. So people who, people don't actually have to go to the town hall to see if a meeting is being posted or not, or if they're, if a meeting is going to occur or not, they can go right onto the website and see what's coming up this week. Yeah, I think that's a great, um, it's a great change, uh, you know, it's being done by the current conditions, but um, I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this uh, change for quite some time, including me, uh, so I don't have to drive up to town hall to see what the the, meeting, the upcoming meetings are. So I think it's a lot more convenient for most people to go onto the website and, and see the posted meeting, so. I agree great. with you. Although, okay, uh, let's, um, any other, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Josh Andrew, am I? Mark Cullen and I. You Lombard, I. Okay, next. Uh, pursuant to Massachusetts Session Laws, Chapter 45 of the Acts of 2020, I move that the Board of Selectmen postpone the annual town elections from Saturday, April 25th, 2020 to Saturday, June 20th, 2020. <clears throat> second, motion made and second. Discussion. I can speak to this, Mr. Chairman, if you'd like. Sure, go ahead, Tony. So legislation was adopted at the state level, allowing municipalities to postpone their elections until June 30th, given the coronavirus. Uh, state of emergency. Uh, so we um, spoke with a couple other communities, spoke with uh, Etta, who was our, uh, who we hired to run the presidential primary. Um, we landed on three options, the 13th, the 20th, or the 27th. We tried to keep it to a Saturday so that at least it's somewhat normal and um, decided on the 20th. <laughs> Um, the 
candidates that are on the ballot are set. The poll, uh, the ballot questions are set. Nothing can be added, nothing can be removed. Uh, the only thing that is linked to the date of the election that will move with it is the voter registration, which has to be 10 days, 10 days prior. Dan, shake your head yes if I'm right, 10 days yes. prior. Yeah, it usually, it's usually 20, but now it's 10. Okay. Um, Dan, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, there is one major part of this temporary legislation, and that is that in addition to absentee voting, uh, which is, you know, a soldier or someone, uh, someone working abroad from the hunt can, of course, use, but they are now instituting what's called uh, early, early voting by mail. So it's basically absentee voting for free. You don't need to read a reason other than I just don't want to risk going into the polling place. So you can apply to Carol uh, Nelson, the temporary clerk, uh, for an application for early voting by mail, and you never have to come to town hall. You can mail in, you're literally mail in your vote um, from right across the street if you wanted. So that's a, a, a significant provision of this particular legislation. Tony, it's Mark. I have one question. So I presume the town meeting will uh, take place sometime after this election. Um, still before or after, either way, I mean, I, I guess I'll say that I'm pretty confident, almost 100% confident that we're going to have to postpone town meeting. Uh, it's unlikely that we're going to be able to put that many people in the room by May 16th. Uh, whether we postpone it to uh, after this election or before the election or um, beyond June 30th, I guess we're still waiting on some guidance from the state. To So once the legislation passes at the state and what our options are, we'll talk as a group um, and discuss, you know, which way to go. Um, but yeah, I, it would be, I, I would be expecting that town meeting is not going to occur on the 16th, but we're not prepared to take that vote tonight. Yeah, I understand that. Um, and I think uh, probably sometime after the election, I know that the last year that the town meeting voted to separate the two and to have the election for us in town meeting second. So if we can, even if we have to postpone both, if we can follow the, the wishes of the town, I think that would be best. So you would prefer to have town meeting after town elections? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. As long as, honestly, for me, as long as they're, uh, as long as they're separate days is really the number one priority for me, because I think if no matter what, if we're going to do June 20th, I'd like to do them upstairs in the main hall and spread the boots out and, and, and set up a safe polling station. Um, so as soon as we get some advice or some guidance from the state, we'll, uh, we'll add it to the next board of selectmen agenda. Sounds good. So that's it for discussion. Okay, we need to vote on that? Yes. Yeah, all those in favor? Josh Hefferman, aye. aye. Mark Cullen and I. Richard Lombard, aye. Okay. That means you get uh, two bonus months, Richie. Yeah, thanks, Chef. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna need that you're gonna need that extra pay right yeah yeah that extra whatever it is 88 cents or whatever i'm on I don't know. Not, not even close to 88 cents i don't think i, I don't think I, I think i give it to charity so i don't get anything anymore uh okay what's next all right i move that the town apply excuse me we're gonna start again i move that the town apply for the title to the abandoned vessel Lady Apple II, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 91, Section 40, for the purposes of disposal. Is there a second? Seconded by Josh. The motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? Tony? Um, yes. Um, oh, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, Dan, I'll let you, I'll let you uh, tell the story on Lady Apple II. Uh, in late October of last year, our harbor master got a telephone call from the police department saying that there was literally a boat drifting in the 
in the the mooring field. It turns out that after uh, Bob rode out there to meet this fella on on this decrepit boat, uh, he found out that the boat had lost power as it was traveling from Boston ostensibly to Ipswich, and uh, a fellow by the name of uh, Frank Fournier was on that boat alone, and it was his claim that he just bought the boat for a dollar and was trying to get it home. Uh, well, as you can see, he never made it, and then he ended up mooring it to the town mooring temporarily with 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 Bob's permission, uh, but then he came back only once to try to to try to re retrieve it, and we really haven't seen him since. Uh, in a situation like that, the state actually has a procedure by which anyone really could try to apply for title if the boat is abandoned. In this case, we, we've met the statutory prerequisite for an abandoned boat, and our primary goal is to just get it off the wharf so the kids don't get up there and do something silly on it, and it's just out of the way. Um, Mr. Fournier apparently has now just basically disappeared. Uh, Bob's having a really hard time getting in touch with him, so his cooperation is a bit of an issue. Uh, we are in touch with the, the environmental police. Um, Officer Sweeney has been very helpful. So the next step that we think we should take is to try to get title to this boat uh, and, then, and then dispose of it um, one way or the other to get it off the wharf. I spent some time talking to Rob Thibault, a harbor master and warfinger. Uh, and once we take title, um, if we dispose of it, uh, there's a cost associated with that. Um, so if anybody wants a free boat, as Dan just mentioned, it's decrepit and Rob confirmed that. Uh, but if you want a free boat, get in touch with Rob. There are parts. There are parts on the boat. It has two motors and there's got to be some salvageable stuff on there. I mean, it's a big boat. It's, I don't know, what is it? What is it, Aunt, uh, Tony? What, 28 feet or something? It's a pretty yeah, good size. it's like a cabin cruiser. Yeah, it's like a 28, 30 foot cabin cruiser. And from the outside, it looks pretty good. Uh, Rob offered to send me some pictures to sh demonstrate that it is decrepit. I said, I trust your judgment. So, uh, but um, there, you know, might be some value to somebody and, and uh, you know, it, it will cost something to the town to get rid of it because it has to be disposed by an approved boat disposal place and, you know, the the fuel and oil is, you know, hazardous waste. So, uh, something to think about. Um, I'll just add that, you know, this situation isn't ideal, but it could be a lot worse. Uh, we, we decided to get the boat out of the water as soon as we possibly could. You know, the, the owner of the boat basically was not responsible the entire time. Uh, and, you know, the last thing we wanted to do was have to pay extra money to get the boat, had it sunk uh, in the, you know, at the mooring out of the harbor. So it's not ideal and we'll have to find out, we'll have to figure a way to pay to get, get rid of the boat, but um, it's, it's much a better situation than it could have been. I, I noticed in this situation, um, we didn't have much notice. He just sort of showed up and tied on to the harbor master's mooring and, and sort of vanished. Uh, mm. uh, but I, I, I do understand, Tony, correct me if I'm um, wrong, but we, for anyone mooring a boat on, at the, at, at, in the heart, we require insurance, liability insurance? We do, we do. There's a, there's a uh, hold on a second. Sorry, I had a ditch, ditch rock on that. Um, yeah, we do. I believe so. I think part of the mooring fee, we, we require that insurance, yeah. Yeah, in the event that a boat sank or something, there was some damage, um, there was some cost in terms of cleanup and those types of things, there would be a mechanism for the town to uh, seek damages? There is. Unfortunately, like you said, this is this situation uh, was somewhat unique. Uh, this, this gentleman bought the boat for a dollar, and as he was driving it out of Boston, heading up to Ipswich, lost power and uh, so, floated in in the hot and I never saw him again. So we were the product of a current, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, I would. I was. I asked. I asked Rob plenty of times, like if we could be the product of a current in the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> it wasn't going to work. <sighs> you sure no one's living in that boat? <laughs> Get the chief check that out, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can, I'm, I'm ready to vote.
Are we ready to vote? Yes. All those in favor say aye. Josh after my. Hi, Richie. Richie. Okay. By the way, that boat, that boat had washed up um, in Bath Point, uh, right behind the Kelly Greens. And then I think uh, the Tava Master pulled it off the rocks and then brought it to the mooring out there. And then they finally um, and, and picked it up and put it in the back of that at the end of the boat yard there. So I, I don't know what. I'm not sure if I went the worthy of the boat, but. But the meeting stuff was at the end of the. These heat pumps don't work in extreme winter conditions, do you? Uh, someone just jumped on. Hold on. All right. Um, well, anyway, that's. Good to vote. All those yeah, in favor. I think we did. I. Or, or, I think we already did, but no. <laughs> we already Sorry. did it. Yeah. We all voted for it. Uh, okay, so there there isn't any ongoing business. Uh, we meet again next week. Um, this as the first Thursday of April. Um, and I don't have anything on town administrator report because uh, you know every day has been completely consumed by the coronavirus and. Yesterday we had the virtual town hall, which, except for one minor hiccup, it was, it was I think extremely successful. And um, so, unless uh, Deb, do you have anything you want to add or any new any new information to provide from yesterday? No, nothing has um, nothing has changed. Everything. Um going pretty well. I actually released um, two people from quarantine today, uh, travelers that had done their two weeks of um, home quarantine with no um, complications, no symptoms. So um, no, fingers crossed. Yeah, we had a very, uh, very informative uh, session last night for anybody that um, is on the phone today that wasn't yesterday. Um, we got a briefing from <laughs> Um, several department heads and um, everybody, all the town employees and volunteers really stepped up and, you know, they're doing their, all this extra work under stressful conditions uh, and still fulfilling the regular duties. So, uh, you know, special thanks to all our town employees and you, Tony, for leading the charge and W2 for um, finding all these these health issues. So thanks to everybody, really. It's a, been a great effort. It's uh, encouraging to see um, how well this community has pulled together. Um, Tony, I, a few comments. Um, I, I, I just echo um, Josh's um, words. Uh, again, thank you all for every everything that you've been doing. Um, uh, we couldn't have a better team in place. Uh, on a brighter note, I did notice that there is a um, there is a new light at the tower at the Coast Guard at the life saving station, um, and I, I guess there are a few people, Ken Smith and Emily Potts and Roz and Andy Cordelio, a few others uh, from the Preservation Trust Institute, um, got together and they they lit up the uh, the tower at the uh, at the uh, life saving station. So it's sort of a beacon. Uh, for uh, welcoming the Hunters back home at night. So I think it looks great. Um, I appreciate their work. Uh, I noticed on uh, social media that it's getting a lot of good comments. So anybody wants to um, drive by at night and look at it, I think it's, it's pretty nice. And um, the second, per I, I do want to give a shout out to one other person, uh, Suzanne Maccarelli, who's been encouraging. Uh, I don't know, Tony, she's been in touch with you and you've been coordinated with her, you know, going to these uh, virtual town hall types of things. So I'm glad that you were able to get this going so quickly and involve the town in our meetings the way you have. Um, things are working out just great, thank you. I appreciate it, thank you. Um, we do have uh, uh, Michelle Capano, uh, Richie, Mr. Chairman, 
if you're okay, uh, Michelle Capano in the, uh, is in the chat asking to um, participate in the meeting now in Citizens Forum, if you're okay with that. I'm fine, yeah, absolutely. Okay, go ahead, Michelle. Hey, thanks everybody. Hey, good evening. Um, well, first of all, I think it's wonderful that we have this Zoom feature available. So really a great job at putting this together in the collaboration. Um, the question I had was, I, we know that you're working very hard. The town has to operate as well as our state government has to operate. But we do have an activity going on regarding Northeastern and they've um, <clears throat> put out their final environmental impact report. The public comment period is going on right now and it ends on April 24th. And so I was wondering if the Board of Selectmen are going to ask MEPA for an extension given the current situation. It's an anxious time for everybody and the current situation just puts another layer of complexity. It would be great if the state could um, allow the, an extension that comment period. Um, because Northeastern is going to work aggressively to get that certificate and move forward with their project. Yeah, I, I would think that uh, we need to request that and it, the request I think would be for 60 days or for as long as the state of emergency stays in effect. I agree. And I would agree also. Tony, would you write that letter on behalf of the Board of Selectmen? Absolutely. And uh, just so you, so you know. Yeah. I, and have town council uh, check it just to make sure that the wording on that document, very important. Yes, uh, Amy. Uh, Quessel from KP Law, who has been involved in all of our comments and extension requests, uh, is already on it um, as far as reviewing the final environmental impact report. Um, but I will, I'm happy to talk to her about uh, at, adding in an extension request. And we yes. can get that. I, I thought I saw something, Dan, I don't know if you saw it, but I thought I saw something that came out of Environment and Energy Affairs about extension on permitting or well, well there is there's is something in the legislature now it's that it's that omnibus bill that's pending regarding the challenges being faced by municipalities and it's in that bill they're they're just basically tolling almost everything um we recently got notice from the S uh, the supreme judicial court um saying that everything all statute limitations are being told for about three months something ridiculous like that so it'd be hard to believe that this wouldn't come within that circle of protection but we can certainly make sure of that um, looking at the bill. So if it's, if it's okay with you, um, I will also ask um, our state electeds, uh, Representative Capano and Senator Crichton to sign on to those bills. Yeah, yes. that would be appropriate. That, would be that sounds great. That sounds great. Thanks gentlemen, we appreciate it. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat. If anybody is on Zoom right now and um, has any questions for the board, please ask in the chat. Tony, while we're waiting on that, I did, I did have one question I, I forgot to bring up during my comments. I know we, we spoke a little bit um, on the phone the other day about this, and I don't expect an answer today, but um, regarding construction, um, regarding sort of landscapers and those types of people working around town. Um, I know the governor has um, not made a ruling on this yet, but one of the issues, as you know, is um, having our inspectors going into homes, inspecting for electrical, plumbing, or building permits, and those types of things. So I think it's something, at least on my radar screen, I'm sure that you're looking into it, um, and you'll advise the board um, uh, what you think we should do at some some future point, but um, I think it's uh, it's an important issue. Yeah, uh, right now my instruction to the building inspector, uh, all of the inspectors actually, is that they only conduct inspections either virtually or by photo documentation. Basically, don't go in the house. Um, we are currently we're still accepting uh, applications which are submitted online. Um, we've, Dan and I and uh, Jeff Blake and I have had a lot of, a couple of conversations about 
about construction uh, in general. We have, you know, the construction at the library started. We still have residential construction going on. So um, it's something that we're definitely keeping an eye on right now. Okay. Um, happy to have that discussion as we get. We're, 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 it was really strange, you know, the governor, the governor was, um, was, was allowing construction to continue. And the guidance that we were getting from the state was to, to let it happen, let it continue. But then he kind of went in the other direction with Boston and it sent a mixed signal to all the municipalities. So um, I, know that the, I know that the governor's office is working on something uh, currently and KP Law is very well tied into that. So uh, we will we'll keep an eye on it and we'll have a discussion as soon as we get more guidance. Dan, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, the you know Nantucket, all uh, six municipalities in the vineyard, and Somerville, they've all taken this no construction sort of stance. Um, and it's really come down to the ability for the town or city to monitor what's happening on these sites. In addition to that, it's also come down to the idea that the hospitals that are servicing these areas can be overrun. So uh, if the Board of Health or the health agent or the health nurse uh, dev comes up to the point where they think that this is just plain unhealthy, the Board of Health has the power to shut them down right then and there. That's clear. Um, using some discretion in making that happen. So you do have the power. It's not unprecedented. Weymouth um, has, has resorted to only uh, mandatory inspections. And I've also heard, as, as, uh, as Tony mentioned, these virtual inspections where people literally walk around with their cell phone and uh, show off um, fire alarms and whatnot. OK, I, I guess I'll just say I'll, I'll wait, um, wait to hear from the, uh, the town's uh, public health professionals about this and Tony and I'm sure will be on the um, on the agenda as we move forward. Uh, on a related note, the national grid effort uh, along Willow Road, that's that's closed indefinitely or is that right? I know Zach told them to stop working and then on uh, yesterday they they had been out there again. Uh, so there must have been some miscommunication. He was following up with them on that. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I, Zach was going to follow up with uh, Faith. <laughs> Zach was going to follow up with Faith at National Grid to see what their what their plan was. I know he's concerned about you know giving up DPWs on a skeleton crew and Granice. Um, who we usually call in for emergency breaks is also on a skeleton crew. So we're, we're trying to be as, you know, we want to get that work done, but we also don't want to risk a potential break again. So I know he was following up with them because the understanding was that they were going to stop, but they were out there yesterday. So we'll see. Um, there's, uh, Michelle also had a question about the Jesmond nursing home and if there was any update regarding the residents well being there. Uh, Deb, do you want to yep. take that? Um, well, all I can say about that is I did have a conversation with the um, administrator. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago though when they were putting those new rules into effect for no visitors. Um, but, and then I, the week following it, I had a discussion with the uh, nursing director but I have had no uh, no information to think that there's anything going on there that would be alarming or um, you know any, there's nothing positive going in there. I I haven't heard of anything to tell you the truth. So they know they have my information and they know how to contact me if they need to. Okay. Um... And another question that came in was uh, about landscapers, um, whether they can, whether they are allowed to work or not. Um, under the governor's executive order or emergency order, uh, landscaping was determined as an essential business and it's allowed to continue. Uh, so as of right now, there's no, there's no restriction on landscapers. Um, I guess the other update is today the, the uh, governor did announce 
uh, that starting tomorrow, all coastal reservations, um, our parking lots are gonna be closed. So tomorrow at noon, I think, uh, the parking lot on the causeway will close. Um, he didn't have a, an end date on that. Uh, along with uh, the parking along Lintro Drive will be coned off. Uh, again, it's an effort to try to encourage social distancing and minimal numbers uh, on public property. Uh, it included in that was, uh, the language he used was, I think, uh, transient activity, like biking and walking and jogging uh, on the beaches. So similar to what we've done in the town of Hunt, with our open spaces, uh, we've uh, allowed for passive recreation only. Uh, so we're in line with the governor on that. And uh, Tony might want to mention too that Dunkin' Donuts closed today. Yes, uh, Dunkin' Donuts is closed. Uh, they are reevaluating whether or not they're gonna open up again. Um, I know that uh, they can be open for takeout, um, but the, the gentleman there, the owner of the business is um, going to shut down for now and make a decision later on as to whether he'll open back up for takeout. So we're down to, uh, I think, Seaside Variety and Seaside Pizza mm -hmm. as, our, as basically our only food options in town, other than Council on Aging, which is doing a good job. Um, We've had to cap it at 25. There's a lot of people that would love to get in on, 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 the, on the lunch service there. Uh, it's a great deal. Um, but uh, you guys got an update on that yesterday. Uh, we, are, uh, we have four different chefs that come in once a week, Monday through Thursday. And then we have Linda and Ann Callahan working in the, in the uh, Tiffany room to, with the chef to, uh, to package and bag all those lunches. And then we have four different um, volunteer deliveries, delivery people that each have picked a day. And then they do the deliveries Monday through, through Thursday. And then on Friday, uh, Captains is offering uh, free, free uh, service to seniors. Um, Jen, great point. Uh, yesterday I mentioned on the, on the, uh, on the, on the virtual town hall was uh, Tony Parentazzi mentioned uh, Anchor. Um, food pantry. Food pantry, Anchor Food Pantry. And, and, and I believe, I, you know, I don't know if that's been posted on, on COVID19.com yet. Uh, if it has, I'll make sure it is tomorrow. But uh, folks can also, uh, are gonna be able to get uh, school lunches and, um, and all the information will be on our website. Right. That's it. You know, you know what that means? Bedtime for Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Glass of wine for Tony. <laughs> I I I uh, I move to adjourn. Motion to move to adjourn. Is a second. Seconded. Motion made. Discussion. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. Josh Andrew, aye. Mike my Colin and I. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you next week. All right. Stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.